Today we are going to learn how to reduce a traumatic lateral subtalar dislocation with a fracture of the talus neck Hawkins type 2. A 25 year old young male had a road traffic accident with a high velocity trauma to his right ankle. He presented to the ER with deformity, swelling, severe pain and inability to bear weight. This is the ankle of the same patient. You can see there is a lot of swelling and deformity on the medial side of his right ankle. Now here you can appreciate a lot of swelling, deformity. There's, there was a lot of tenderness in the same area and the patient was unable to move his ankle. An x-ray was ordered and these were the x-rays that we got posterior and the lateral views of the same patient. The talus neck fractures can be classified by Hawkins classification. In type 1 there is only a talus neck fracture. In type 2 in addition to the talus neck fracture there is a subtalar dislocation and in type 3 in addition to the talus neck fracture and subtalar dislocation we have in addition a tibiotalar dislocation. A type 4 is one in which we have a talus neck fracture along with subtalar, tibiotalar and talonavicular dislocation. Also as we go down the classification, the incidence of avian increases from 0 to 13 percent in type 1, 20 to 50 percent in type 2, 20 to 100 percent in type 3 and 70 to 100 percent in type 4 of Hawkins. Let's uh, analyze the exit of the patient. In the AP view we can see that the foot has moved laterally in relationship to the talus and hence it will be a lateral subtalar dislocation while as in the lateral view we can find a talar neck fracture so it's a displaced talar neck fracture with subtalar dislocation making it uh, eligible to be classified in Hawkins classification as Hawkins type 2. Now I shall demonstrate how to do close reduction for a lateral subtalar dislocation with a fracture talus neck. Here we require two people to do the close reduction. The surgeon stands on the foot end of the patient while as the assistant holds the knee. First of all the gastrosoleus complex is relaxed by flexing the knee to 90 degrees. The surgeon then unlocks the calcaneum by exaggerating the deformity that is by doing a dorsiflexion and eversion of the heel. Then he gives a longitudinal traction while as the assistant is giving a counter traction. This is followed by gentle inversion of the foot and followed by plantar flexion and while at the same time a direct pressure is put on the tailor head. Uh, these maneuvers help to accomplish the reduction which can be confirmed by appreciating a clunk which is heard or felt by the surgeon and uh, here here we can see the reduction happening here the reduction is complete and immediately the patient becomes pain free now after that can put the leg down and look for the signs that the deformity and swelling has reduced. Here we can see that as soon as the reduction is complete there is a substantial decrease in the amount of swelling and deformity as compared to the pre-reduction photograph of the same patient. After that, a below knee Kramer wire splint was applied to the patient and a check x-ray was taken. Here we can see that the lateral subtalar dislocation has reduced and uh, the talar neck fracture is still in situ which requires an open reduction internal fixation.